This is the first video in a limited series where I'm going to give advice to players who are looking to build D&D characters. Because when it comes to making your character, there is really no wrong way to do it. Now, rather than me suggesting which feat you should take, or which spells to take at which level, or which background combos really well with which specific spell, although I might cover some of that in later installments, I want to give you a look at the various approaches you can take to character creation. If you're a new player and the idea of creating a character still seems a little bit daunting, this series will hopefully hopefully illustrate the idea that there are a lot of super fun ways to do it. On the flip side, even if you're a more experienced D&D player, you might be making your character one or two different ways and not exploring other options. And this series could help you consider other approaches you could take. Today we're discussing an approach designed to shake you out of your preconceived ideas and inspire creativity. Rolling for stats first. The creators of this game assume that you'll only roll for stats after you've already picked your class and your race. But today we're going to try moving that step a little further forward in the process, and using it as a point of inspiration for a new character. Now you can just roll your stats and then assign them where you want them as, again, the game assumes you're going to do. But really that's not quite what we're looking for. That's just a way to get six numbers. That's not necessarily going to inspire anything. We're looking for an approach that can serve as the catalyst for character creation. And so this is an idea that I am stealing directly from Matt Colville. Roll your six stats in order. Just like the normal method, you start by rolling four six-sided dice and dropping the lowest one. But unlike the normal method, your first roll goes into your strength. The second roll, that's dexterity. The third is constitution, and so on down the list. Now the reason we're starting this series with this approach is because he uses it specifically for new players. The reason why is because, in his experience, people who are new to D&D start out by trying to create a character they've seen from other media. But that can be kind of frustrating when the system of D&D doesn't necessarily adapt well to these concepts from other media. And well, I'm sure you could run a YouTube channel where you make more than 400 videos about how to create fictional characters from other media in Dungeons and Dragons, you'd probably have to take those characters all the way up to 20th level in order to get some of the cool abilities that they are known for in comics and movies and books and games. So this approach of rolling your stats first can get you out of the mindset of trying to figure out how to adapt certain characters into D&D. Instead, it starts you off with a blank slate, and that gets you thinking about what D&D actually has to offer you. Matt Colville describes this process as almost chipping away the marble and finding the statue within. Sorry if you hear any noise. There's a leaf blower outside and a circular saw upstairs, so if you can hear them... I, I did my best. Now there is always a chance that you're going to roll really, really low. And you and your DM have to decide if that's okay with you. But Technically, that's always true. If you decide to roll for stats, that's always a possibility. Whether or not we're using this method, I generally advise my players to add up all of their modifiers after they've rolled for stats. Adding together their ability modifiers, not their ability scores. If they add all their modifiers together and they don't have at least a plus two, they're probably going to have a pretty rough time. But that might not be true. There's a barbarian in one of the groups I run who has really high physical stats, strength, constitution, dexterity, and really, really low mental stats. And her player is having a blast. And besides, there's nothing specific to this approach that makes that any more or less likely than usual. This is just moving that step a little bit earlier in the process and using it to springboard ideas off of. So in order to see this in action, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna build a character for you using the roll six times in order approach. All right, I've got my character sheet here and I've got my 4d6 and we're just gonna roll six times. We're gonna drop the lowest every time. And those are gonna be our stats, and from there we're gonna start building our character. Ooh, bad. <laughs> Real bad strength. So probably not a fighter or a paladin. That's a four, five, six, seven, eight. That is an eight in strength. Ooh boy. Ooh doggy. Alright. Let's see what happens with dexterity. That is real, real good. Wow, three fives and a six. That is sixteen. That's really good. This could, this could be a lot of different classes now, because some of them, all you need is high strength, or high dex. Ooh, great constitution. That is 14. That's really good. Next we have intelligence. Okay, not a wizard. <laughs> that is another eight in intelligence, but that's okay, because that really only rules out the wizard. Then we get to Wisdom. Okay, not amazing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
for wisdom. So that rules out a lot. That pretty much rules out monk, ranger, definitely rules out druid. Uh, let's see what charisma is, because this is going to make or break. Because right now I'm thinking it's a rogue, unless the charisma is really high. Oh, charisma's not bad. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14 again. Okay, so this could be... There's a couple things this could be. I could say this is either a... Uh, this could be a bard, because you've got decent charisma. This could be a sorcerer or a warlock. I think we're going to stick with rogue. Well, no, we can't really do rogue that well, because low wisdom means really bad ability to perceive, and low intelligence means really bad ability to investigate. And you would need either one of those to do some of the exploration stuff that the rogue does really well. So I think we're going to stick with bard. So this is a bard. So we're going to call this a bard of one. Um, for a race, let's see. What do we got? Real quick. Now, assuming we're just using the races as they're presented here, not the stuff from Tasha's, just because it's a little easier for our purposes today. Uh, constitution for the dwarf we're not going to really benefit from because it's already our highest skill. So we're not going to go dwarf. Elves would increase dexterity and either intelligence or wisdom. Don't really need that either. Halfling, dexterity increases and charisma increases by one. That's okay. It's not great. Human we're definitely not going to go with because every score would go up by one and we would get basically nothing. It would make our wisdom not a negative modifier, but that doesn't really matter. So we're not going to go with a human. Dragonborn. What do they get? Charisma by one. It's not bad. Strength up by two. It's fine. I don't need that. Uh, gnome increases intelligence and either dexterity or constitution. No. Not going to be a gnome. Half-elf. Half-elf I'm liking. I was actually leaning towards this. Half-elf gets a charisma bonus of two, which would make it a 16, which means we get two 16s. And it also increases two other scores by one. Um, again, this is not using the rules from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. We could increase the wisdom so it's not a zero, or so it is a zero, rather. But I think I would actually put it towards intelligence, so we were a little closer to getting that higher. And then the other point, I guess I would put into constitution. More hit points is always good. I don't really care about low wisdom for a bard. It's fine. Half orc, strength and constitution doesn't matter. Ooh, tiefling. Tiefling's actually really good because it increases intelligence by one, which we we're already talking about doing for the half elf, and it increases charisma by two. And so, tiefling or half elf. Um, what else do you get for each of these? Yeah, and then with the tiefling, we get some more cantrips. And we get Dark Vision. I guess we have Dark Vision with the Half Elf as well. Resistance to Fire Damage. That's extremely good. Let's go with that. So we're going to go with a Tiefling. We're going to give that a 16 Charisma, which is great. And then our Intelligence goes up to 9. It's still negative. It's the same modifier it was before. But the next time we get an Ability Score Improvement, we can give some more to Intelligence. Get that up a little higher. And the only reason you might do that is because if you want to roll things like History or Arcana, which a Bard is very likely to do, uh, it's good to have a higher intelligence for that. But I still think a Bard is a pretty good fit for this. Yeah, I'm still going to go with Bard on the uh, on this character. Maybe a mistake. I don't know. I guess the other option would be, now that we're a Tiefling, would be to go like a Sorcerer. But no, I want to play a Bard. I've made my decision. Actually, actually, I should look again and see what, um, yeah, Bard actually may not be a good choice here. Tiefling for sure. Bards are all about knowledge and stuff, though. What are the recommendations? And it's dexterity and charisma. Yeah. Charisma and dexterity. That's all we need. I'm sticking with Bard. Final decision. 
Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to do right here is pick a background. And um, we're going to go entertainer. Nice and simple. Um, because it increases two skills we're already really good at, which is acrobatics and performance. And both of those are going to be our highest skills in the game, because they're both off of our highest stats. So that's us essentially saying these are the things we're going to be really good at. So entertainer. And that is a pretty good start. I mean, I'm not going to go through all of this. There's other decisions that we could make, but um, this is a really good start. We know that this is an entertainer. We know that this is a tiefling. And we know that it's bard. And all that just came from these dice in order. That's it. Oh my gosh. Oh, I wish I could have rolled that for stats. Ah. Uh. And with that, we have a character. I mean, we don't have a lot of the stuff yet that's going to make it a distinct character, you know, like a name or spells or literally most of the stuff that I actually care about. But we have the beginning. We have something that we can start with. And that was the whole goal. You know, when you're looking through this book, whether you're new to the game or you've been playing for a long time, sometimes you can get some analysis paralysis. Sometimes you just don't know which class or race or background or whatever you might want to play. So rolling some dice and letting that kind of make the decision for you is really liberating. You know, part of the reason that I didn't go with a, a warlock or a sorcerer is because I like bards a little bit more. You know, I ended up picking the class that I thought interested me most. I picked the race that interested me most, and there were certainly more options if I just started from scratch. I could have made anything. But starting with this, and just using what was in this book, I came up with a character that I'd be totally happy to play. I mean, Tiefling, Bard, Entertainer isn't exactly anything novel or new, but I think I could pretty easily build off of this and make something I was really excited about. I mean, heck, this alone, I'm really excited about. I like Tieflings, I like Bards, I like Entertainers. What's not to like? So the next time you're building a character, I encourage you to try this approach and see how you like it. And if not, stay tuned. I'm gonna make more videos in this series and I might find a different approach that you haven't tried before that you really like. Thank you so much. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you subscribe to the video, you'll get more like it. If you hit the bell, you'll know when they come out as soon as they come out. And let me know in the comments if you create a character using this approach, what are they like? Tell me in the comments below. I think that would be a ton of fun. And if you want to have more fun building characters and hanging out and talking about D&D, there is a Discord channel in the stuff below. Check it out and see what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Play fair and have fun.